Hey guys, Dan Heilman here. We are back with another Awaken Chaos Era video. Today, I want to make a video on general gearing, uh, how to build a unit for damage, for support, for whatever. I'll go through some of the use cases that are specific to units um, that need to be built differently. And I'll just talk about what sets work on who and stuff like that. I've had a couple of requests for this video, so I wanted to get it out there for everyone. There's a lot of new players coming in, and I just wanna show you guys how I go about gearing characters. Okay, so first of all, in general, a damage dealer is gonna want damage stats. So let's talk about my Cyrus. Um, I will talk about what kind of gear and how I build them out and what my process is. So very first thing is, this is the normal gear on my Cyrus. My very first goal as a damage dealer is the first thing I'm gonna say is, if I got a lot of sets, what set do I want that person in? So Cyrus, um, you're probably gonna either want Assassin set or a Cursed set. Um, as we proved in my last video, Avarice set does not work on her. So what I like to do is Cursed set and Attack set. I farm a lot of Queens, so I have a lot of Cursed sets, I have a lot of Attack sets, and I have a lot of Revival sets. So I try to put all of my units in one of those three sets. Now, if you don't have those sets, it's fine. You care more about stats than you care about sets in the beginning. So you wanna hit a certain amount of speed to be able to go before the waves. You wanna hit 100% crit rate on a damage dealer, and then you wanna focus all the rest of your stats into attack and crit damage. So the very first thing I do is, I'm on my Cyrus. What am I gonna build first? The very first thing I'm gonna do is look at the boots because I know Cyrus is extremely fast. Look at, she has 170 speed, and she does not need speed boots. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is pick out attack boots for her, okay? So I'm gonna go through, and um, these are not the right boots. These are not my normal boots. I actually took my Abaddon boots off. Uh, sorry about that. Let me actually put the real ones on her. Okay, so these are my normal boots on her. So you can see I got crit, I got crit damage, and I got health, and I have attack percent as the main stat. Now, if you have a particularly slow person, or you have someone like Nathalia, for example, who I need to go before the waves, I may run speed boots. So I pick out the boots first, and you can see on Cyrus, I have attack boots. On someone who needs to be really fast, I'll put speed boots. So, okay, so I start with the boots, I got those on, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put on my best gear. I'm literally gonna go to every single piece, and I'm, for me, since I have a lot of gear, I'm gonna go crit, and I'm gonna go crit damage and I'm gonna try to focus on getting as much crit, as much crit damage, and as much attack as I possibly can. So that's just gearing in general for attack units. You can see my stats here. I'm just over 100% crit, which is what I want. I wanna be 100% crit. If you're early game, focus on getting as close as you can to 100% crit, and then focus on crit damage and attack because you're gonna get some rolls of crit damage and attack when you're building your gear anyways. So just try to get as close as you can to crit rate, 100% um, crit rate, and try to get whatever speed you need. <clears throat> if you're in the early game, um, you don't need to worry as much about speed. Once you get into stuff like Void Tower and you're trying to build out gear sets for Void Tower, you're gonna need a lot of speed. So, you know, just kind of take it with a grain of salt, but speed, also, you want to speed tune, right? So if you have someone who's putting decreased defense on the boss, you want them to go before your damage dealers. If you have someone who's buffing your team with increased attack, you want them to go before your damage dealers. So usually, in general, supports, I build faster than my damage. My damage is usually going to go last in turn order, so I don't care that much about speed. Okay, so that's attack. What I'm going to do, now let me show you some specific cases for attackers that you need special sets. Uh, let's start with Zatlux. Zatlux is a great wave clearer. And he has a passive right here that increases his crit rate by 30 and his precision by 30. Uh, if you don't know what precision does, precision basically helps to counteract uh, deflex. So if you are weak affinity, so he's green, so if he was attacking a fire unit, um, a red unit, then this precision helps him to not get deflected as often, okay? Um, the only other one that's kind of confusing in here is focus. Focus is like accuracy in most games, chance to apply defects, okay? Resistance, this should say chance to resist effects. I don't know why it says dodge because it's not the same as the dodge mechanic, um, but yeah. Okay, so Zatlux, important case. He only needs 70% crit rate because of this passive. This passive does not show up on the tooltip. So you can see my Zatlux is 74% crit rate, which is above the cap. And he has 216 crit damage and almost 5,000 attack. And he has enough speed to go before the waves. So that's how I built my Zatlux. Um, that's how you should build Zatlux. 
All right, now one other specific case is Nathalia. Okay, so Nathalia, I have her in a guard set because her second um, trait here says if she has a buff at the start of her turn, she gets two more buffs. And her trait says when for the amount of buff she has, she hits extra targets and deals extra damage. So that's why I have her in this guard set because she can be totally self-sufficient. She doesn't need a buffer to go before her. She can solo all the waves in Ash Magisteria. That's what I use her for. I also use her in other hard content uh, like Endless Trial. And you can see I just built her in attack sets because I tried to put her in a cursed set to give her extra uh, A1s, but I couldn't fit it in because I did not have the right gear because I needed speed. I needed speed, so I had to have her in speed boots. Um, I could have used a two-piece speed set. You know, you kind of just juggle what you have, right? You're looking for a certain amount of stats, and you got to build her using the gear you have. So if you needed a speed set to get her fast enough, then do that. If you just want to throw speed boots on, do that. If you want to look for speed substats, do that. Whatever you need to do to get past 100% crit, to get a decent amount of crit damage. For endgame builds, I'm looking at getting around 250% crit damage. Sorry, I'm kind of in the way. Um, that's what I go for, and I go for roughly 4,000 attack. That's what I consider a good damage dealer. 100% crit, 4,000 attack, 250 crit damage and decent speed to go before the waves that's what i'm looking for in all of my damage dealers that is baseline for the stats i'm looking for okay so that's specific damage dealers we went through nath and we went through um zatlux so let's talk about poisoners they're also damage dealers but they need to be built differently so if you look at all my poisoners they have a very high amount of health they have a very high amount of defense they have whatever speed is necessary to do the speed tuning I'm trying to tune them to. So for me, I want Gangello to go first, so he's slightly faster than Santis, because Santis has an ability, that her trait that says if there's already a poison, she puts on additional poison. So I want Gangello, my other poisoner, to go first, so my Gangello is built slightly faster, but you can see the stats I'm going for here. High health, high defense, enough speed to go in whatever order I want, and high focus. You can see I'm almost 95% focus. It's probably a bit overkill. Um, <clears throat> it just happened that I got a lot of rolls into focus. Uh, so yeah, you could probably shoot for about 60% and probably be okay. I think my Gangello is somewhere around there. Let's go look at my Gangello real quick. Another Poisoner. You, you can see his stats are 167 speed, just enough to go before Santis. He also has 91% focus, but I think you only need roughly around 60. Same thing, around 20,000 HP around 1800 defense and um resistance and agility are very nice to have agility basically gives you a chance to deflect and uh that you take 50 percent reduced damage so that's huge agility is a very good defensive stat um agility seems to be hard to roll i don't have a lot of pieces with really high agility so that is something nice to have in your poisoners okay so you're going to build supports very similar to how you build poisoners i'll go through some of my support units in a minute one last category of damage dealer is someone that you want to land buffs, okay? So Abaddon has a lot of buffs on his A1 here, and he basically will be built with focus and other stats. All right, so let me go through his stats. You can see what I've done here. Again, I want to be over 4,000 attack. I want to be at 100% crit rate. I'm 0.5 short, which is pretty annoying. And I want to be above 250 crit damage. Those are my goals. You can see he's very slow because the content I use him in, I don't need him to go first. Um, so I mostly use him in Guild Boss and sometimes I use him in Tulpa. But in Guild Boss, I don't really care to go before um, there's no waves or anything. So speed is not as crucial for me. But look at this focus. I have 70% focus on him because he lands a lot of debuffs. And I want him to land those debuffs because his damage is based on those debuffs. You can see attack steal bonus 5% damage per negative effect on the target. Okay, so that's how I geared my bad in. That's how you want to gear damage dealers that need to place debuffs. You want them to just add some focus into their build and still try to hit that 100% crit, 250 crit damage, and 4,000 attack. That is what I think is a good baseline endgame build. Okay, now let's talk about support units. So support units, depending on who I'm doing, um, I build them slightly different. So blackhorn for example just kind of look through people's abilities and see what they say okay so this says heals all team members based on the amount of this character's max hp so guess what that means 
you're going to want to build as much HP as possible, right? So you can see I have a revival set because, as I said earlier, I have a lot of revival gear because I run queen a lot. So I try to put all my supports in revival gear. Revival gear just basically gives them a heal every turn. It's nice for keeping them alive. I like it on support units, okay? So Blackhorn, max HP. So you can see I'm going for health little bit of focus he does land debuff so he has a reduced attack on his a1 so you do want some focus on blackhorn but i'm focusing on hp right health and also hp is better for revival sets because it restores 10 percent of the max health at the start of the turn or 20 percent if he's below that so health is always just generally useful if you have a revival set on a support but for blackhorn it's even more important because his spells are based on attack i'm sorry health okay so high health again health Health percent, health percent, health percent. You get my point? Lots of health, enough defense. I'll show you the stats real quick. Uh, my black horn is kind of slow. I'd like to speed him up, but you know, I have 23,000 HP. I have 1400 defense, and I have a little bit of focus, you know, 37% just to land his decreased attack. Okay? So that's a support unit. I'm going to build most of my support units that way. Another thing to notice when you're building is look at this as S tier health. That means you'll get more benefit from building health than you will from defense, right? Because you have a higher base stat and all of your percentage stats scale off that base stat. So if you have S tier health, you want to focus on health. All right, now let's talk about a different support unit. Um, let's talk about Hakrin. A lot of people use Hakrin. He's an S tier unit. He's very good. You can see again, his defense is S tier and his health is A tier. So you want to focus on more defense. But not only that, his trait. His trait says grants a team-wide defense bonus equal to 20% of this character's defense rating. So that means that he gives 20% of his defense to everyone on your team. So you want as much defense as you can possibly put on him. If you look at mine, I have almost 4,000 defense, 17,000 HP, a uh, tiny bit of speed, and focus is not really important on him. He has The only debuff he has is taunt. It's kind of a nice to have feature so you can or you don't have to build him with focus but you can if you want this ability actually hits extremely hard so if you have really end game gear and you can fit a little bit of crit rate in uh this ability hits like a truck because look at this damage scales with this character's defense and my mine is almost four thousand defense so keep that in mind there if you want to put get a little bit more damage out of your hacker and put some crit rate all right, Windstrex, another support unit, but this one is totally different, right? So this is mostly used for speed booster. She's really good in PvP. You want to build her with a ridiculous amount of speed. So you want her in six speed pieces. You want boots that are six star, leveled all the way to level 15 for as much speed as there. You want items that have speed substat rolls, okay? You can see I got speed substat rolls and all these. My Windstrex is nowhere near as fast as some people's. I don't do a lot of PvP, but I just want to show you kind of what you're looking for. Speed rolls. Of course, you cannot roll speed on helm or chest. If you want to check that, all you do is go to the gear manager, and you can see if I pull this down, you can see how speed is grayed out. So that means you cannot roll speed. So that's important to know. Cannot roll speed on helm and chest as a substat. So that's important to know. You can also put people in something like a stun set. So let's see, I, if I build a Tia, Tia's really good at CC, right? She has freeze on her AOE. She has uh, a bunch of different CC. So what I did is I threw her in her stun set. So you can see the stun sets are kind of hard to farm. They're in Gemini Dragon, which is very hard. But if you have stuff like that, I mean, feel free to put something like that on your CC units. It will only give them more CC and help sustain fights. Okay, the video is getting kind of long. I just wanted to go through, in general, how I gear different characters. I want to give different examples, different units, show how I've geared them. So hopefully this helped out those uh, newer players who don't quite know how to build all the different units. You really want to read through all those skills and make sure, you know, if they're, if they're trying to land debuffs, they need some focus. If their damage is based on max HP or their heal is back based on max HP, build them HP, etc. I went through damage dealers, I went through poisoners, I went through supports, I went through everything. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go down there, smash a like button if you enjoyed the video. Sub to the channel if you're not already. And I hope you guys are enjoying my content. I try to post videos every single day, so hopefully you guys are enjoying them. All right. Have a great day, everyone. See you guys.